G'day! Today we are continuing on on my Flycorp string challenge as we try and make our way around the world in one continuous line. So, where we left off, uh, we just got Uganda and Kenya. I believe our next move was going to be South Sudan. Now, I don't know a whole lot about South Sudan. Um, I do know uh, a whole lot of South Sudanese. Oh, we don't upgrade planes, we upgrade that much either. Um, I know that I know that South Sudan is one of the youngest countries in the world because it did separate from Sudan uh, and I know that there are a lot of South Sudanese refugees uh, because there is a very significant uh, Sudanese population in Australia I think as a, as a direct result. So generally if you, you see Africans in a in Australia, it seems like for the most part they are going to be Sudanese uh, by descent. So, this should be a very interesting uh, learn that we get to do here about South Sudan because unlike all the other countries, it's probably not that young, not that old rather, uh, and probably didn't get its freedom in, in 1963. Okay, but like all the other ones, it is the Republic of South Sudan. Uh, 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 its population was estimated at about 13 million in 2019. Juba is its capital city. Yep, there it is right there. And largest city. Nation is sometimes informally referred to as the Nilotic Republic, as it's supposedly the place of the Nilotic peoples. I don't know what that means, but uh, I guess that's something else we can learn about. All right, let's get our origin. Uh, it got its autonomy from Sudan in July 2005, and it was declared and recognized uh, in 2011. It does sound about right. It, it is. Uh, there is definitely now a generation of, um, of Sudanese Australians who have. Australian accents and so then <laughs> like uh, if, if you talk to anyone who's Sudanese it's probably under the age of, of 20 or so now uh, you are talking to someone with an Australian accent so they definitely definitely have been here for all right there we go so um, it gained independence from Sudan in 2011 making it the most recent sovereign state or country with widespread recognition as of 2022. Uh, it includes a vast swamp region of the Sud, formed by the White Nile, known locally as Bar al Jabal, Jabal meaning mountain river. Uh, Sudan was occupied by Egypt under the Muhammad Ali dynasty, and it was governed as an Anglo-Egyptian condominium until Sudanese independence in 1956, so I feel like we're uh, that's that's probably a bit of shared history with, with the rest of Sudan there. Uh, following the first Sudanese civil war, Southern Sudanese, uh, sorry, the Southern Sudan Autonomous Region was formed in 1972 and lasted until 1983. A second Sudanese civil war broke out in 1983 and ended in 2005 with the Comprehensive Peace Agreement later that year. Southern autonomy was restored. It uh, <laughs> it um, became an independent state in 2011, following a 98.83% support of independence in a referendum. Yeah, and it suffered ethnic violence and endured civil war characterized by rampant human rights abuses. All right, now let's learn about these melodic peoples. What we got? I mean, we're sort of right across South Sudan here. We've got um, they're almost like if you needed to put three locations on a market, I feel like you were covering the whole country um, with, with a city reasonably close to everywhere. You're pretty close to how you would lay that out. 
Okay, Nilotic peoples are the people indigenous to the Nile Valley. Nilots constitution, constitute the majority of the population of South Sudan, an area that is believed to be the original point of dispersal. After the Bantu people, they constitute the second most numerous group of peoples inhabiting the African Great Lakes region around the eastern R Great Rift. They make up a no notable part of the population of the southwestern Ethiopia as well. Which probably isn't surprising since it's, it's a neighbor. I don't mind that. I mean, it's it's obviously up to them to, to what they want to be named, but I mean, it is cool the idea to, to sort of, if you've separated from the country, just get your own identity. Um, however, I would also completely understand that you are, if, how potentially heartbreaking it could be to have to separate from your country of origin and then also give up the, the name of that country. So I could fully believe that either they, people could strongly want to remain um, under the name Su Sudan, and I, I could also believe that people would would not want to. Depends on what way I suppose that you are uh, you associate to the name. I reckon the next one that we're going to bring in, uh, and I'll give it a few minutes to, we'll go, we'll go address some problems uh, while we're waiting for this one. Montreal, so that's heading north. Some of these are quite tricky. These are some very short routes that we're looking at where these guys are starting to struggle. Like, what about all of these routes has caused this to become the, the log jam? Like, why is that where this is starting to struggle? Was it the wrong San Jose? <laughs> We've just gone San Jose to San Jose. Toronto, Paris. So that is this northern route as well. So let's get that guy. Let's up him. Again, this guy here, he's only got the two planes. So logically, this guy should be able to make much quicker work of, um, of moving that stuff along. And all of it is related to him. That is definitely the way heading south. Let's have a look to see what we've just inherited there. So we've just got a Kenyan city. And maybe we'll wait to see what the next um, city we get is. But if it's not in Sudan, uh, South Sudan, we might move over to the uh, CAR. All right, where are we looking? So again, it's heading north. And that is, this is the northern side here. Let's, yeah, let's grab that guy. Pace him up a bit. And because it is so much significantly longer than the other side, we'll give them a 300 as well. So they can have three planes running that route. And again, it is heading north. So that is this guy. Now I can see there's two planes on the other side, so possibly it is just that sort of extra assistance that that guy needs to counter, counter against. Back to this guy. We'll give him an upgrade just to sort of set him on the right path. There's only one plane on that side. I mean, it is a much shorter route than what these guys are doing. He also needs to shift a lot of stuff, so maybe we do need to pick up the pace on some of these guys. And we'll um, speed him up too. I mean, yeah, at this point I shouldn't be surprised everyone that needs help is heading north. So he was heading north, which is this side of things, so let's give him a, 
the your 500 seater. You're not too bad off. Um, let me do a small plane there. Sort of help that a little bit. Tucson uh, heading, I guess that's south of that one. So let's just let him pick up the pace. Someone did comment on the last video. I did I make the the comment that I was wondering about um, whether the um, the issues are with the fact that this is a um, string that is causing the problem here, and in, in sort of the way that this will lag up when we we try and go fast. Is that because I'm doing a string, or is it just purely because of the amount of um, airports and someone did say that they have tried they did try a string challenge i think they said uh it reached a point of, of absolute hecticness so they just changed it to being that they have like a, a normal sort of string of routes and it didn't didn't improve things in terms of the performance so i'd say it's not necessarily to do with the fact that this is a string but possibly more just to do with the fact that it's a um uh, that there's so much going on that the I'd say the equation must become a little bit taxing at some point for the for it to process. Well, we got another city just then. Here we go, down here in Mozambique. So that says to me as well that we're not currently uh, looking at getting more Sudanese, South Sudanese, sorry, airports. So let's. Bring in the Central African Republic. And it becomes our very first north of a hundred thousand purchase. Now these guys we won't connect to anything yet either, same as Sudan. Because with this guy um probably gonna be whoever his port's closest to is who's gonna take on those cities. So obviously this is just gonna fit in here as opposed to connecting to the end of this line this line on the other hand actually I'm intending to sort of I think I was saying I'll go into Ethiopia and then we'll go go around that way and we're heading north it's just this tiny little guy here that's where the struggle is to France. That's not surprising that we've just kind of just um, given that a, a boost. It's meant that going north of him is going to struggle a bit more. All right, so while we are continuing on here, and that's heading north. Let's learn about our new acquisition, the Central African Republic. Um, the CAR. Uh, and this, this feels like a first in a while. It is not the, they're not a republic. or well, they're not the republic of the Central African Republic, at least, or obviously the Central African Republic, which I think is just a novel for... But at least they've worded it in a different order. <laughs> the official language is French. Uh, the population as of 2020 was 4.8 million. Interestingly, the population in 2003 was 3.8 million. So not a massive rocket in, uh, in population there. Uh, estimated population of 5.5 million though by 2021. So, uh, so they're definitely a bit quicker now. Uh, as of 2022, the Central African Republic is the scene of a civil war ongoing since 2012. Uh, most of it consists of 
Sudano, Guinean savannas, but the country also includes Sahelo Sudanese zone in the north and an equatorial forest zone in the south. Two thirds of the country is within the Ubangi River. Uh, sorry, the Ubangi River Basin, which flows into the Congo. Where's the Congo? Down here. All right, so I guess we're flowing that way. What is today the Central African Republic has been inhabited for a millennia. However, the country's current borders were established by France, which ruled the country as a colony starting in the 19th century after gaining independence from France in 1960. So I guess they were one of the first ones with their independence. Can you imagine that? They sort of really started the, the trend of having the word Republic in your name and everyone else went, you know what, we're going to do this a different way. We're going to chuck it at the front. We're going to get it out of the way quick. Uh, it was ruled by a series of autocratic leaders, including an abortive attempt at a monarchy. By the 1990s, calls for democracy led to the first multi-party democratic elections in 1993. Uh, Ange-Felix Petassi became president, but was later removed by General Francois Bazizi in 2003 coup. The Central African Republic Bush War began in 2004 and despite a peace treaty in 2007 and another in 2011, civil war resumed in 2012. Civil war perpetuated the country's poor human rights record, which was characterized by widespread and increasing abuses by various participating armed groups. So it doesn't sound like there's a lot of great stuff going on in the, the Central African Republic, unfortunately. A side note, though, I like it is one thing I am enjoying about, especially being forced to move slowly through Africa. I am getting to learn a lot about a lot of countries I do not know much about. We find out more about the Civil War. So it's a. Ongoing civil war involving the government, rebels from Salika coalition, and anti-Balaka militias. There's a map breaking down where everyone is. The government forces control Emily Bangui. Uh, yeah, this guy's in government land too. And so is Bambari. This guy, so the government sort of controls the the majority of uh, the West. Then got different military, sort of like different militia, I guess, own controls up here. It actually seems like there's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and different groups that are, control some part of country or other. Uh, the FDRC is who controls a lot of the north. Uh, the third largest area of control is over here is the white uh, on the map which is represented as sparsely populated area so there's not too many people that I guess live against in a, a fair bit of the, um, uh, the east here. They sort of they're along the uh, Congo border but not not moving up at all. I suppose there's not... I was going to say, I'm surprised I haven't heard as much about that. Um, with how close they are to South Sudan, I would have thought that it was a similar... Like, it's possible that they are... Um, coming out in refugee as well, but... Possibly because it is such a small, like, what was that, 12 million to the, the 5 million here? Maybe, um, maybe it's, we just don't, well, you see Sudanese and you assume that, well, you see Central African Republicans and you are, you feel that they're, assume that they're South Sudanese. Alright, so let's 
trying to think of where to put this guy. There's our connection now, thanks to this new addition. Let's get him upgraded. And what we'll do is we'll bounce these guys in a nice little square. Like I said from my uh, my map reading there, there's no one over here. There's no cities or in population enough for anyone to even bother wanting to control the area politically. Um, that I would imagine that we can we can skip that, uh, or that we're not going to see anyone in here. And I mean, the Congo is also sort of not showing too much in the north. These really short routes are really surprising me. I mean, I w it, it's possible as well that what's happening is... I'm, no, I was going to say it's because I'm not looking and so it's possibly whatever city currently the massive population has moved to is is where the problem is. But these are these are much bigger populations than, than what any plane can, can hold. And it wouldn't be that surely that you're just going to suddenly see a dump of people in a spot. It's going to be that that's just a permanent issue along the line. I mean, possibly doing some of these fixes will move that that sort of bump along, but all right, let's um, we get someone else in now. We can get an Ethiopia, I would say. Our next Addis Ababa. Now that is a city I've heard of. Why have I heard of it? I can't tell you. Have I heard of it? Yes. Officially, the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. Landlocked country in the Horn of Africa. What are we calling the Horn? Is this the Horn of Africa? It shares borders with, let's see, countries. Uh, is home to 117 million inhabitants. That's about on ten, about ten times the population of South Sudan next to it. Makes it the twelfth most populous country in the world, second most populous in Africa after Nigeria. Uh, its capital city and largest city is Addis Ababa. Lies several kilometers west of the East African Rift, but splits the country into African and Somali tectonic plates you're wondering what the East Africa Rift was, like I was. <laughs> they have a very nice, colourful star on their, their flag. Again, a, a flag that I don't feel like I recall seeing before. What is the language of... official language is Afar. Amharic. Or Oromo, Somali, Tigrinya. So this feels like a country that's never had um, European Maybe it was is it Italian? Find out. Atomically modern humans emerged from modern day Ethiopia and set out to the Near East and elsewhere in the middle Paleolithic period. Lowland area of present Ethiopia proposed likely. I don't know what that word is. Uh, let's skip ahead. Kabish has the site, so Kabish, um, which I assume is either a city or a town, or just a region, has the site of the oldest fossil of human bones believed to be 195,000 years old, 
along with Omo River, the skull remains are 40,000 years older than in Herdo, Ethiopia. Kabish. River in southern Ethiopia. With a population of 8,000. I recall there's, there's some really amazing um, old ruins and things in Ethiopia. I'm be misremembering that. I remember there was some, there was an, when looking at um, sort of places to travel, I feel like there was a, a place in, um, in Africa that I didn't expect there to be such amazing... Um, ruins as there was. I think it's Ethiopia. I think it is. Debri Behan. Well, this is a bit tricky because we, we probably want to exit Ethiopia into Somalia. So I guess we got to just wait to see where our um, our central sort of cities are gonna are gonna end up putting us. Tunis. All right, so you're heading north. And isn't that an exciting novelty that we've got a, an African city that's that's struggling a little bit? That's a major struggle you've got going on there, buddy. We'll also have to soon start upgrading our planes further up, so I think we're up to here. We've got a lot of Looks like I've done a whole lot here. Alright, we'll go to there. So, going into... Oh, we've only got our one city in Tanzania, so we'll let them... Uh, at least luxury flying. But, of course, our uh, Central Republican cities probably need a uh, bit of a boost too. leave him like that for now. I don't want him to be over. Uh, I don't want him to suddenly surge the guy above. It'll take a little bit of time for this guy to correct. Because all of these are green, there's just no one really there too much. So I don't think that this guy's going to get overloaded too much worse than he already is. Auto. And heading north. Just look at the length of those two two flights. It just seems so surprising that this guy is the one that's sort of buckled. All of Iceland is uh, getting red there. That's a very tricky one to, to try and address. I mean, what can these guys do other than just come back and get stuff as soon as they can. I mean, if I if I try and improve this guy anymore, what will happen is um, we'll just lose more passengers when they get to that point. Well, that's a, a bit more of a helpful curl that Ethiopia has given us there.
Depends on where the Somalian cities are. If the Somali cities are all in the south, then we just might hook them into Kenya. I guess at least at this point it's a good thing that all the cities that are actually problems are sort of more central. Sao Paulo is probably the worst um, in terms of being so far down the end of one line. Uh, north is this way. Ruin uh, is hitting Los Angeles side, so we'll go that one. Cedar Rapids, it's Birmingham, which is that side. Oh, look as a whole how we're, we're looking. What heading to Sao Paulo in there? Well, I feel like Ethiopia is going to have to be used um, in sort of a most convenient location sort of setup. So almost like, say, we have this guy bounce through here and down, work up here to come into Somaliland and Djibouti to maybe then sort of look through these uh, to get up your Eritrea. Hopefully we can uh, knock off what I assume is what you would call the Horn Coast. Uh, Africa's Horn Coast of the four of those guys. Maybe you wouldn't count a tree as part of that. That'll be definitely our goal next time is to, to knock off all of them. We've done a nice little landlocked Africa. Purchase with the three of these guys. Uh, any questions or comments, feel free to check them below as always. And until next time, catch you later. Yeah.